Today's Lunch and Learn, the second uh, such event that we've had here at the NSC, uh, is, be, is, is about the rollout of the one gig pipe that's been worked on as we speak. Jerry's company has been working here behind the scenes for the last couple of weeks and possibly months, Jerry, I'm not sure. Um, Teddy is going to introduce, just to explain where we're at with that, and Jerry's going to give you an overall view of what it means to the centre and to the clients of the NSC. Um, there will be questions and answers at the end, guys. If you have anything, don't be afraid to interact and, and have a chat. Seamus was due to do the, the, uh, the introduction today, so Teddy has been dropped in it. Um, so we'll excuse his brevity of conversation, okay, in advance. Thanks very much, Teddy. Very good. Thank you, John. Um, just a background first before we start. Um, in 2000, and 2000, the NSE launched as a shared services offering, particularly for IT startup, comp IT startup companies, and we secured a two megabit line here at the time. It was gold dust in the Irish market. It cost about 50,000 euro annually to, to actually put that pipe into the building. Okay, but at the time, it was adequate. The explosion of the internet hadn't happened at the time. Okay, four years ago, that was expanded to a 100 megabyte pipe, and in the last year, with this big concept of big data, the demand, the growth, um, and the capacity requirements for tenants of the NSE and future tenants um, grew significantly. Okay? And for that reason, we've decided to expand the current offering uh, to a capacity of one gig for now, with the vision of four to six gig in the coming years. Okay? Um, we've done this with the help of Jerry here from the Cork Internet Exchange. Okay? Um, but what this allows us to do is to process large, significantly large volumes of data, which we couldn't do in the past. Okay, um, so if someone has, you know, large data banks of data, they need to download into the NSE, such as a company called Tree Metrics, where they go out into the marketplace, download huge volumes of measured trees in, in, in the market, download it, do large processing of data, and upload that into their farms. Okay, they couldn't do that unless they were housed in this building here itself, okay? So it now removes any barriers for tenants who need to process that data. It may not, it may not be a requirement today, but it is coming, okay? Things we couldn't do today, we can do now, okay? Um, so we're only limited by our imagination, okay? Um, and what has happened here is that, um, with Jerry's help, we've managed to bring that technology to the tenants, okay? Uh, we're the first shared services business in Cork City to have this level of capacity to our tenants itself, right? Um, and what we want to do is we want to actually expand that over time as well, okay? Um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get Jerry to explain uh, some of the benefits here, but what we're actually doing here is we're trying to actually have a broader initiative in the Cork region. It isn't just about the NSC. The NSC might be first to market, but this is about community, okay? And we're trying to represent the IT and business communities of Cork and make sure that we can act as an attractive area for inward investment companies into the Irish, com into the Irish market, particularly Cork, okay? Um, and by bringing companies like the NSC, we'll say CIX, and some of the UCC, CITs, the other institutions and large organizations in Cork City, gives us an economic scale to bring down the cost of this pipe itself, okay? So it's really about collaboration and working with various parties. It's not about Mayfane or just the NSE. Um, here we're talking with the NSE today, but really is, there's a bigger agenda here. It's about making Cork a place for attractive companies to come in. We've got an educated workforce. We need the infrastructure. The infrastructure is coming. And hopefully today, you learn a few things of what this might thing might do for us itself, okay? So um, I hope you have a bit of time for Jerry to, to explain more about the technical details. So I'll head over to Jerry now. We adopted this name Cloud Valley to kind of create a concept, okay, and that is that um, cloud computing is something that um, uh, we need to uh, make a home for in Cork. I, I think there's an opportunity for us. You've got VMware and EMC and Apple here. Um, I think that they can act as very good kind of anchor tenants for the development of a Silicon Valley, Cloud Valley kind of concept here in Cork. And I, I've believed this for about a year and a half and it's something that I've been trying to promote and working with people. Um, the, the stars are starting to align in terms of kind of bringing that together. Um, mm -hmm. 
the I, um, I, I'm going to um, I, I'm going to do this in a kind of a, a top-down way of looking at it. Um, what is going on behind the scenes that is not maybe readily visible, okay, to a lot of people, uh, is that there's a huge amount of connectivity to starting to turn up in Cork. So companies that I mentioned. Uh, um, large multinationals are starting to bring large pipes into Cork. So there are several 10 gig pipes now coming into Cork uh, recently. Um, Aurora are going to light their first dark, dark fiber connection uh, over the next six or eight weeks. Um, uh, we've got um, uh, ESB Telecom. ENET apparently signed a deal recently, okay, to mm -hmm. allow them to have fiber along the train tracks back into Dublin. So there's a hell of a lot of fiber connectivity coming into Cork. And it's happening in the background, and it's happening for the multinationals, um, and it's not, not even hitting the press. Okay, Cloud Valley, the project Cloud Valley is about distributing that to the to the second tier companies, to the FDI companies that are below the tier ones, you know, the the, the 50, 100, 200 employee companies, and also to the SMEs and to the Cork industry. So Cloud Valley is about distribution within Cork. Um, the 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 big difficulty with Ireland as a connectivity centre, and I'm going to stay up at the top of the pyramid for a second, the big difficulty with Ireland as a connectivity centre is basically we are a spur on London. Um, there's some connectivity into North America, but if you look at a, at a drawing of all the fibre connectivity into this country, um, it really basically starts somewhere on the east coast okay, and heads over to Wales, UK, or a tiny bit of it in the north up into Scotland. Uh, Ireland has no connection to mainland Europe and um, the huge proliferation of large data centers in Dublin is there because of all the, the, the fiber optic cables that are going into Dublin. And since they don't go anywhere else in Ireland, that's the reason why all the data centers, all the large data centers in Ireland have located in Dublin. And those data centers are somewhat um, uh, um, confused by the fact or, or upset by the fact okay, that they're a spur you know, coming from London. So there, there is a growing demand now, okay, for connectivity from Ireland to mainland Europe. And um, there's one company in particular, a company called C-Fiber, who uh, recently opened a 72 fiber pair um, uh, connection between uh, the, the, the uh, somewhere in Hoth going across to Anglesey Island. Um, and that single connection of 72 fibers doubled the number of fiber connections okay between Ireland and the UK and that opened for business about 15 months ago. Diane Hodnett, a court lady, is the managing director of that company and she's looking to put another 72 fiber pairs between here and France. Uh, and the reason she wants it is to give a back door out of Dublin and also okay to create rings because rings are the way to build fiber networks because you want resilience. Uh, if a fishing vessel with uh, an anchor pulls up her 72 fibre pair and it takes her a week to repair it, okay, she needs a back door for her customers. So she's talking about the tier one guys buying direct dark fibre and they will be looking for a ring. Um, so this very high density connectivity, it looks like it's going to come through Cork. Um, and um, there's also a good possibility that um, uh, Hiberni Express okay, may land a fibre in Cork. Um, we are working, CIX is working very closely with Hibernia and we're hoping that there will be announce, an announcement very shortly that um, there will be uh, an extension of Project Kelvin from Dublin into Cork and uh, that, that will be a greater than 10 gigabit connection and hopefully a dark fibre connection later in the year. Um, that starts to create the possibility then for a link from Hibernia Express, okay, off the south coast that's supposed to be built in two years' time, okay, coming into Cork as well, because if they have a node they can tap into and they can sell in Cork, then there's a good chance that they will actually sell in Cork and take it back to Dublin. Then there's a better chance, okay, that they will land here in Cork. So we think the next two and a half to three years is going to see a lot of fibre connectivity coming into Cork. And I'm going to move down the chain now. And Cloud Valley is all about distributing that connectivity within, within Cork. So the idea of Cloud Valley is that two switching and routing centres would be set up in Cork and uh, last uh, March um, I, I um, met Seamus Ivers at the St. Patrick's Day Parade in Blarney and we sat on the wall of the secondary school and discussed it as a plan and it struck me as being a particularly good plan. So the idea is to put a switching and routing centre 
uh, in, at the NSC, which is on the southeast of the city, and uh, another one in CIX, which is on the northwest of the city. And the a WDM ring would then be constructed around the city, linking the business parks. And that WDM uh, would have resilience in terms of it being permanently connected okay, to two routing and switching centers. So if one of those was down, the other could keep connectivity up on it. And those two routing and switching centers then at the NSC and at CIX become the injection points for services. So if Diane Hodnett lands in Cork, okay, she's got a place okay, to inject services in Cork, so she just doesn't bypass us and go to Dublin. If Hibernia Express okay, comes into Cork, they've got a place to inject those services, and we can benefit from them locally. Um, something I always say to people, okay, is um, since the late 1990s, um, a, a huge amount of fibre connectivity in this country has been coming into Wexford, but Wexford didn't benefit. The fibre went straight to Dublin and it came out in Dublin. So you need infrastructure locally in order to benefit from that connectivity. So I think connectivity is going to go through Cork, whether we like it or not, because Dublin is going to be the market. And the concept of Cloud Valley is to pick that up. And what CIX are trying to do in conjunction with the NSC is to kick off the idea of Cloud Valley and eventually to have maybe 20 or 25 uh, industrial estates and business parks in the city uh, linked together and maybe a little bit outside the city. We have uh, in um, Middleton, we have the um, um, National Space Centre, which is a downlink site for satellite. It's the most westerly location in the European Union for downlinking from satellites and potentially um, that will be a huge generator of traffic. Um, in places like Clannacilty, uh, we've got industries that are relatively high users of bandwidth. Okay, I, I can see um, I, I can see Cloud Valley extending outside of the pure city and, and, and getting maybe point-to-point -point connections or maybe extending the ring. I could see the ring being extended to Middleton quite easily. Okay. Um, so once you get Cloud Valley then uh, in place and you get the, the um, so I'm going to move down the pyramid now. Um, you, you then create the opportunity for wireless internet service providers and small regional ISPs and indeed large uh, uh, ISPs okay, to piggyback on the same infrastructure. So um, a use case I'd like to make you aware of is um, uh, um, a, uh, a company that have a contract for uh, the distribution of broadband to the Moran Hotel Group um, have decided okay, to use the roof of the NSC and Cloud Valley infrastructure for the delivery of broadband to uh, so it's the Silver Springs Moran Hotel. And um, we, we're delighted to facilitate that. Um, we, we were asking them why this was a critical issue for the Silver Springs Hotel. And apparently, the Silver Springs Hotel with the convention center is going to target um, high end. Uh, events. Um, I, I believe there's a teachers conference coming up there shortly and nowadays when people attend conferences you need uh, connectivity um, to meet the needs of the presenters and so on but even more importantly nowadays people come with their Wi-Fi enabled devices so um, this particular project is an example of where Cloud Valley infrastructure is going to raise the capability of uh, Fitzpatrick Silver Springs Hotel. Um, it's only a couple of kilometers from here, and it's got perfect line of sight to the roof from here, so it was a normal project. Uh, it, it was a natural project, okay, to develop. And we see more and more and more of that happening. So what we think is going to happen is that when the connectivity gets into the business parks, so CIX have offered um, uh, a fee to the airport business park, for example, um, to purchase a small sp space of ground up there and to build a telecommunications infrastructure. And if we do that, then we're going to gift it to Cork Neutral Internet Exchange, which is a not-for-profit organization for the development of Cloud Valley infrastructure. And then the members of Cork Neutral Internet Exchange can utilize that infrastructure. So that's one of the parks we're hoping to start with. Okay. Once it's in the parks, then we think, okay, it can go from there, either by fibre to, the, um, uh, to, to housing estates, or in Ireland, radio is going to stay very, very important. So point-to-point -point and point-to-multi-point um, uh, uh, -point -point, um, uh, radio links for the dis dissemination of broadband is going to be very, very important. And we see Cloud Valley as being an infrastructure that will facilitate that. So that's, that's th they're the two topics I wanted to cover with you today. Thank you. 
any questions of any of that? Or? Jerry, you were talking about the high level stuff. One of the things that you explained to me when we were talking about, <clears throat> about the back door, and I'm not sure if everybody gets the importance of the back door and the possibility of the hook up yep. to Apollo North and Apollo South sure. as well. Can you just give a little bit of a higher view as to why Google and a few of these other sure. guys in Dublin would be? Cool. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, I'm in my comfort door there, John, because comfort zone, because that's that's a, a very good techie question. Um, the the um, the the surprising kind of thing about um, fiber optic connectivity is that um, transoceanic fiber optic connections fall into two classes. Um, if you can travel a distance of 300 kilometers or less, then you do not need an undersea repeater. And that means that there is no cost implication for increasing the number of fiber pairs. So if you take a fiber connection across the North Atlantic, then you're limited to two or three or four fiber pairs mm -hmm. in that uh, crossing because of the need um, to put in repeaters. So typically the repeaters are put in at 50 kilometers and they cost one, one and a half million euros each. So to get to North America where you have 3,000 kilometers to get to Newfoundland, divide 3,000 by 50 and you get the number of repeaters, multiply that by one, one and a half million and you get the cost of the build, okay? If you go to France from here, you can't go there in 300 kilometers, but you can come up in Cornwall or you can come up on the Scilly Isles and then it's, it's, you've got a halfway point. So that means that you can get from Cork to France with any number of fiber pairs, um, provided you come up once. Now, um, Diane has a plan, okay, to take the fiber connection from here and bring it into Booth in North Cornwall. And Booth is significant because, as far as I'm aware, the largest, the two largest transatlantic fiber connections coming into Europe are Apollo North, which comes into Booth, and then on the north of France, you have a place called Lanyon, which is where the Apollo South comes in. Now, if we can get from Cork to Bood, and then from Bood to Lanyon, which are both sub 300 kilometers, that means that the fiber optic connection coming out of Cork, okay, picks up the two biggest pipes, okay, going into North America as well. So we get into France, which takes us into Paris and up over to Amsterdam, but it also picks up relatively inexpensive um, IP transit into North America. Now, why it's significant to have dark fiber out of the country, dark fiber means you've got lots of pairs, so it's not a managed service. If you have three fiber pairs going into North America, then you've got to work with the provider to manage the service. Now, if you've got a Google or a Microsoft, they don't want to manage service. They want a dark fiber pair. Across the Atlantic, they have to take managed service because, you know, people have to share these fibers because they're so scarce. But Diane is selling dark fiber products into North, uh, into North Wales, and the product that she'll be selling out of Cork will be a dark fiber product. So that means that somebody in Dublin or in Cork, and there will be no disadvantage to being in Cork in, in terms of a data center for Google or Facebook or whatever, they can buy a dark fiber ring, okay, that takes them out through Dublin, into Wales, down into the UK, across the channel, or they can go south, okay, into Bood, down to Lanyon, and that can be a dark fiber connection. So they can build, they will be able to build a fiber ring, <coughs> a dark fiber ring out of Dublin into the main data centers. And the main data centers in Europe are in Amsterdam, Paris, and Frankfurt um, without coming off dark fiber, which means it's a managed, it's not a managed service, which means they're not sharing the infrastructure with somebody else. It means they can guarantee that that information, okay, doesn't get onto somebody else's infrastructure and the whole issue of um, data protection and so on, okay, becomes moot because the equipment, it only passes through their equipment. So dark fiber is critical to Ireland and it looks like Cork is going to be the back door for that. And it's not that there's a market in Cork for dark fiber because there isn't. Not at the moment there isn't. The market for dark fiber in Ireland is in Dublin. And, uh that comes into Cork in yeah. two, or two or three years' yes. time, you hope to have the Cork City Loop in place of all that. Yes. Now, um, whether or not uh, the, the, the big backdoor plan and all that happens, uh, Cloud Valley is still uh, 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 something we have to do. So Cloud Valley is, is going to benefit organizations like the NSC and the people that operate from the NSC. It's going to benefit all of the business parks. And um, CIX, my company, is a data center uh, 
the lifeblood to us, okay, is connectivity to the data center. So we have a vested interest in promoting connectivity, even if we're not involved in either the delivery or the sale or the profitability of it. Because it's a bit like if you own a supermarket, if somebody builds a motorway to your door, the value of your supermarket Im improves. So some people kind of look at CIX and say, why are you pushing kind of, are you a communications company? We're saying we're not. So we're actually helping companies to get connected to six. And that is exactly what the NSC are doing. They're helping the people within the NSC, okay, get connected to the real world. So I've had lots of meetings with people, and I mean lots of meetings with people that have said, I've got a really good business idea. I, 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 I had a meeting with somebody about six months ago, okay, that said, I want to get into genetics and um, genome sequencing. And this is a really good R&D project. Two academics in Cork, okay, are making great strides on this. And they said, um, we could set up the business in Ireland, we could sell it out of Ireland, but we couldn't deliver the service from Ireland. We would have to put our compute capability into Frankfurt because if we get, let's say we get a hospital, okay, who sends us 500 genome uh, samples for analysis, okay, then it would take six weeks for the samples to literally get into Cork for us to an analyze and send out the results. So we would have to bring them in overnight into Frankfurt, okay. So the compute power would have to be located in a data center that couldn't be in Cork. Now, if you start to bring in multiple 10 gigs into Cork, okay, then that changes. Um, so if you take it that you need to move, if, if you start thinking in terms of terabytes, um, a terabyte over 100 meg link, okay, I, 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 I haven't done the calculations, but I have a feeling for it. A terabyte over 100 meg link takes several days. So if you had a project uh, that involved the processing of a terabyte of data and you needed to get it in. Now you can buy a terabyte of storage, okay, in Maplin for 200 euros, so that's not the problem, okay? But if you had to process that, it would take you four days to get it in here last week, okay? But next week, it will come in, divided by 10. It will come in in uh, eight hours, nine hours, whatever, which may, you, you can do it overnight, and then you can start processing it and get your results out the following day. So that's a concrete example of the kind of thing that, uh, uh, that connectivity does. And the industry is moving towards bring your own device, okay. Um, um, the, the, the need for connectivity, okay, is growing. And interestingly, it's growing faster in the domestic side than it is in the, uh, in the, uh, in the commercial side at the moment. The growth in bandwidth requirements into homes is growing faster than into commercial organizations. I know it's not relevant to today's conversation, but um, Netflix is, I think, the largest uh, provider of content in, um, in, uh, in, in North America now. <coughs> cool. Excellent. An interesting statistic for you. Um, um, CIX, uh, I don't know the connectivity into this building would be excellent, but CIX at the moment, okay, we counted the number of fiber pairs coming into our building. Now, they come in from two different sides, so a lot of it is resilient, but we've got somewhere between 400 and, fi 400 and 500 fiber pairs actually coming into the building. So there's a hell of a lot of fiber in Cork. It's, it's badly sold, badly distributed. There's a lot of vested interests, you know, kind of maintaining prices. You know, they don't want the price to collapse, but the connectivity is actually here. So we've got to actually get the demand up. So one of the things that's going to happen, I think, is uh, as more large multinationals kind of take more of the big pieces, we can live off the, the, uh, the, the, you know, the bottom feeder bit, the bit that comes out, you know. A, another 10 gig pipe into Cork of IP Transit, okay, would have a dramatic effect on the city, and you can get that, okay, quite easily. Colt came in six months ago with a 10 gig connection. Um, if Ibernia come to Cork, they'll come with multiple 10 gigs on dark fiber. So these guys are changing the nature of the city uh, in terms of its external connectivity. And Cloud Valley is a vehicle for distributing that internally. And CIX wants to partner with as many people as possible to make that Cloud Valley concept a reality.